All right, welcome back to JT Gatoring. So a little different of video, we're inside today. Um, I'm gonna be going over valve lash or valve spring clearance. Um, this is gonna be on a 13 horsepower Predator engine and it is the Hemi version, so it looks a little different. All right, so after doing the backwater kit, doing all the videos on it, uh, this is the playlist, it'll be linked down below. Um, the one issue that I had with this engine is that I got a lot of vibration, uh, just to make sure that it's not the engine. I'm going to be doing some maintenance on the engine I already have. So we're going to go over it. The first thing that I went over was to check the valve lash. Someone down in the comments said, Hey, check your valve lash. Um, just make sure it's easy to do. Um, just check it. So that's what I went ahead and did. Um, a few things that you are going to need. This is the 13 horsepower Predator engine, and it is the Hemi version. The Hemi version ends in 4.9. Scroll down here and find it. 60349. That is your Hemi version. Um, it'll have a little bit higher um, torque that you'll see on the box. I think it is 19.8 or maybe like 21 foot pounds. I don't know exactly. But it's this one. Uh, it's the non carb compliant. Uh, California friendly one. This is the uh, non-friendly California one. Um, so you will need uh, feeler gauges. I went ahead and bought a small pair. You can get those on Amazon here. I'll have that link down below. It helps the channel. Um, we get a kickback for it and it doesn't cost you anything extra. Um, the issue that you have with this Predator engine, let's see if I can bring that up for you. 60349, you go here to the valve clearance, uh, your intake and exhaust. In the most part, the easiest way or the simplest way to check this is that the 0 .004 gauge should fit, the 0 .005 gauge should just barely fit, and then the 0 .006 gauge should not fit at all. So that's how you check if your valve clearance is proper. Um, so as you see here, um, 0 0.0039 to 0 0.0059, that is your valve clearance and make sure that this is the engine that you are going to be using. So your feeler gauges, you need to make sure that they will be able to measure that. This one goes down 0 0.0015, which is good. and goes up to 0 0.025. Um, that was one issue that I ran into, so just make sure your feeler gauges can measure that distance. So the first thing that you'll need to do is, you can do it without doing this, but it does help to remove your recoil cover uh, start. It's three bolts or screws, one here, one here, one on the bottom. Take those three off. This comes off and you'll see a gray little wheel there. Um, you can turn that so that way you can get the... Um, the valves to sit where you need them to sit. Um, when you open it up, it'll look like this and it looks completely different than what everybody else shows online. So that's why I'm making this video now. Um, these are your valves, rocker arm. Um, we can get into adjusting a little further down, but the main thing is, is you have a high point and a low point. Um, you can find top dead center, but for me, it just seemed easier to go with the absolute bottom and the absolute top. So to check the clearance on the valve, from what I read, I am not a technician or an engine guy at all. This is just YouTube research. Uh, the way that I checked it, instead of trying to find top dead center, is it was easy for me to see which one was the low point, which one was the high point. So if I was checking the exhaust, which is this back one, I would put the intake all the way down. You would turn the front of the engine and you would play with it till you knew that the intake was at the very lowest point that would take all the pressure off of the exhaust, uh, exhaust side valve here. And that's how you could check your clearance. So once you got the exhaust at the very top, um, this one, you could see it a lot better. Um, and do some drawing. So this is your lock nut. This is what keeps everything tight. This is how you adjust it. So this is your lock. 
and this is your um, your adjusting. This right here, right in here, that's where you stick your feeler gauge in, not down here. It's a no-no. It doesn't fit in there. It, it won't go through. Um, in here is where you want to check. I'll erase that just so you can see it. So right up in there, in between this and this. Stick your feeler gauge in there. Um, again, your point zero zero four should fit. Your point zero zero five should fit, but it should be really tight, but it should still be able to fit. And then your point zero zero six should not be able to fit at all. And that's how you know that it's properly in there. Um, there is that much of a difference in there but from my research on it that seems to be the best uh, way to do it so again 0 0.004 should fit 0 0.005 should fit it's going to be tight but it fits and then 0 0.006 will not be able to fit at all or should not be able to fit at all if the 0 0.006 fits then you need to tighten it uh, even more so again this is your lock nut that's what holds everything tight this is your adjusting. So you would loosen your lock nut, adjust your top bolt as needed, and then lock it back down with your lock nut after you get your spacing correct. So this is another picture of the tools that I use. Um, the top of that nut, the top of the nut here is very, very small, and I didn't have a wrench that fit it, so that's where I use the adjustable wrench. Uh, the 10 millimeter, I believe, is this lock nut. So you'll need that and then your feeler gauge. And again, I can't say it, stress it too many times. 0 0.004 should fit, 0 0.005 should fit tight, 0 0.006 should not fit at all. Um, so you see that. And then after adjusting the valves, I didn't have to adjust anything. They're actually perfect. Um, I did an oil change and this was just a funny rig that I thought I'd take a picture of. Um, I got the engine sitting level and set up my, my oil catch, made sure I had plenty of rags and it actually ended up being very clean, but, um, drained the oil, put new oil in there, checked the spark plug, checked, uh, the air filter, did all that fun stuff. Um, so it has new oil, new spark plug, um, valve lash is great and the only other thing that I could do is a compression test, but um, I don't have that type of tool to test that with, so I'm not going to be testing it as of right now. I'm going to go ahead, go out, run this engine, uh, play with it, see if the vibration got any better or not, and then I'm going to be putting the swamp runner back on and seeing if I have vibration. If the vibration isn't there, then I can sort of narrow it down to say that it was more or less the backwater kit than the engine. And I just wanted to make sure before um, switching everything out and changing stuff. So I did the maintenance on the engine. I should be getting out on the water soon. Uh, hopefully quick. Haven't been out there in a long time. These hurricanes keep whipping through and um, weather has not been that great. I'm glad I did not do alligator season this year. So I'll keep putting out the videos. Uh, there will be a few inside videos because the weather's not all that great outside. And... Um, get her going so hopefully i'll see you around um you can see me on facebook there's the long tail facebook group page uh this will be the picture of it here and um hopefully i'll see you around thank you for watching this is jt gatoring